Rhaegar Cinder is dead. Those are words that no man had ever imagined possible to speak. No one thought would ever be said. Even in his weakest moments, in his weakest years, it felt impossible to imagine that the father of Valyria, the great unifier of North Valyria, the man who birthed House Cinder from the ashes, was no more. People say they knew that he had died before they even saw him. For the dragon pit, all dragons that sat there were restless for the entire night, chomping at their chains. And at night, people tell stories of a white shooting star which went across the sky. When his room was entered in the morning, he lay there, dead, silent. They say he looked at peace with himself, all things considered. His funeral was the most expensive affair in the history of Illyria. A four-day ceremony, during which Majesty seemed to fly overhead, before eventually disappearing from sight on the third day. Thousands from across the Empire and the world came to Illyria for the ceremonies, to pay their respects, and watch as his body was carried through the streets of Illyria before arriving at Majesty's Keep. There it was kept on show for two days before the ceremony, where the priests of Illyria came and gave him all the, old, the rites of the old Empire before his body was wrapped and placed upon the balcony, overlooking the empire he helped form. And as tradition, it was his own son who brought the final blaze. His aim and call struck Harris, and the fires burned, as Faxalex shot his blaze upon the corpse, burning the old dragon blood in the new dragon's fire. It was announced during his ceremony that a large sept would be built in his name, as a restorer of the Valyrian faith, as well as an expansion to Majesty's Keep to be named after him, to ensure his legacy was never forgotten. As his sons, Naaman and Jahiris, stared into the fire, they knew that his legacy was one that could never be toppled. They would live in the shadow of the dragon. Compared to others, though, Aemon did not seem heartbroken or upset in any form. Many said he kept a brave face. Others say he'd been waiting for this day for quite some time. Even before his coronation, Neyman moved quickly to resecure assets and push himself into a position of power. He wasn't a fool, he knew people saw his brother Jahiris as more true heir than himself, despite being half the age. But he would not be denied so easily. He needed as many dragons on his side as he could get to keep the peace, and he did that by first putting his son into a position of power. His own son, also named Jahiris, which was meant to be a name of power, but he was absolutely nothing compared to his uncle. He was two years his uncle's senior, and yet he was a worse fighter, slower of the mind, and barely able to manage his own realms. And worse for legitimacy, his hair wore a beautiful brown, with not a shade of white within it. He had married his aunt, Dana, a woman just as slow and weak of mind. But both were dragon riders, and that would make them important to Aemon's rule. Of the two, Dana was the greater strength. She rode upon Vesakros, one of the three of Majesty's children, a fully grown beast compared to the grandchildren which still were in their clutches, some within their eggs. In order to secure Dana and Jahiris as dragons, they were granted marine for their own control. If they held it firmly, then Aemon knew that he could rely upon at least two kingdoms to support his claim. Though, with what he had heard of Yunkai making alliances and trades with the Triarchs of Atlantis, Perhaps a king was not as secure as he would like. Then came the question of majesty. She had not been seen in quite some time, absconding the dragon pits to hide within the caves she first grew up in, the caves where she'd first made a bond with Rhaegar. King Aemond, stylizing himself now as an emperor, chose to ignore the beast that had helped make the realm. He and his son were already were bonded with dragons, his second son Rhaegal had an egg of his own, and his grandson too had an egg, one he heard was progressing quite nicely with. In truth, Aemon would kill the damn flying bastard if he had a chance, it was a threat to his legitimacy. Instead, maybe out of sentimentality or maybe out of knowing that fighting a dragon was foolish, he let it pass, let it leave. It was not too long after the funeral that someone finally came to her, to share in her grief. A man who had only recently learned the truth, that his grandfather was actually his father, and that he had held far stronger blood of the dragon than any other man alive. And before he could get a chance to speak with his true father, to share in their bond, his father passed away. 
died without a word goodbye to any of his sons, let alone the one he never acknowledged. That upset Aeris far greater than anything else. He made a pilgrimage of sorts to those rocky cliffs and caverns where Majesty grew up, for he knew, he could feel, that she would be there, waiting, weeping, mourning. And she was, sitting upon the rocks, brutally eating a carcass of a sheep. Eris did not fear to approach the beast. He knew the truth. He was a son of the dragon, and Majesty could feel it too. Lord Eris was only Lord of the Copper Hills, a small and insignificant land. But Majesty would make any man a king. He could feel it, so long as the opportunity was right. That night, the 17-year-old walked into the cave a nobody, and exited on Dragonback. Aemon heard the news all at once. His brother Jahiris had begun to plan a possible assault on Astapor to secure the region for his own, granting him far more wealth than men, while his ships also sailed into Volantis, carrying slaves and trades to form alliances. His nephew, who he had learned was truly his brother, had now flown upon Majesty and taken her to the Copper Hills. He had to act back. He had to secure Astapor before someone else could. He had to keep his brothers in line. If, if he was going to rule. Fear began to fill his heart, mixed with his mad and furious thoughts, all filling that sickly heart. But not for himself. He knew that these fools would not rise against him. He had 30,000 men behind him, and a further 20,000 from Marine, as well as five fully grown dragons. No, no, no. His son, though. His f slow, foolish son. If he would take the throne, he would be leapt upon and crushed by their might. For his sake, Emperor Aemon had to stabilize the realm during his lifetime, if it was his blood that was to rule. It was then he began to cough. In a fit of fury, coughing more and more, and from his mouth came blood. The newly crowned emperor looked faint, his skin as white as his hair. But he wiped away the blood. He did not call for a maester. No one could know the truth. That the young dragon was growing sick before he'd even had a chance to fly. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we'll be playing as Emperor Aemond Cinder, also known as Aemond the Dragon of North Valyria, a lunatic who's cruel, deceitful, authoritative, temperate, paranoid, but he is our character and he is our king, our emperor, so we shall be playing as him. Uh, thank you guys so much for the feedback and the enjoyment of the series so far. I'm very much enjoying playing, uh, and I'm happy to keep going here, especially since we're in such an interesting situation now in North Illyria. Uh, we have granted Marine to our heir, Jahiris. Our brother, also named Jahiris, sits upon the throne of Yunkai. One that needs a lot of repair. However, the big question was about our father's dragon, because we could not tame it. We already dry ride our dragon, Faxalix, and our son rides uh, Ithalix, Faxalix's child. And of course, they are a child of Majesty. So what? who now has Majesty? Well, Majesty, with three children, by the way, we'll look at these children in a moment, but it's been tamed by Lord Eris. Now, of course, if we go back a bit, you may remember Lord Eris is the child of Visenya the Dove, who had an affair with her father and produced many children. So really, Lord Eris, despite being a grandson of Emperor Rhaegar, is in fact actually Emperor Rhaegar's son. And maybe he could push that claim, especially now. He rides Majesty at 53 years old, 50 Marshal, one of the most powerful dragons still alive. Majesty, of course, Fatalix is ridden by us. Gloombringer is uh, ridden by our brother, Lord Paramount Jaharis, the young guy. And Vaxalix is ridden by our sister. So you can see, essentially, 
the three dragons of our, our our father's dragon produced three heirs, and all are ridden by his heirs, especially Dana, who is now married to Jahiris. This is really good for us in terms of keeping power, because realistically, I've always said who, he who has majesty has a claim, so there's no doubt Eris has a claim through the ownership of majesty. And Jaehaerys is a very, very popular figure. I mean, look at those stats. He is beloved, he is incredibly strong, and he has a claim on all of our stuff. He will be a problem, no doubt. Especially when compared with us, who is decent, but is nothing compared to uh, Jaehaerys' line. So what is the problem here? Well, or how do we counter this? Well, by landing Jaehaerys, we give him a power base. Uh... Most of our ba our dukes and barons will remain loyal to us, and Ruji Harris are marrying Dana. Uh, we still don't have a grandchild, although hopefully Dana will be pregnant. That's the big hope. But we have three dragons on our side. We have Ifelix, we have uh, Vesigroth, and we have uh, Faxalix on our side. If conflict should arise. However, there's still some uncertainties. There are other dragons around. In fact, let us uh, show me the dragons. White Claw is now a uh, Pegagon's child. Is still out there. As is Terex. My son, Ragel has a dragon egg. Good chance he could... He's my second in line. Yeah, second in line. Has a dragon egg. Valerian is, however, is a wild dragon now, so someone could tame him. Meraxes is in my court and is ridden by my mother. And so any I'm missing? Where's Quicksilver? Yeah, Quicksilver is ridden by one of my courts. He is Malaris. So the majority of the dragons are now in North Valyria in some capacity. With all that gone over, we can begin. No major changes to the land other than the changes of these these ownerships and the dragons. Uh, he immediately gets us levy reinforcement because he's just very, very good. Uh, my niece lacks an education focus. Let us give her intrigue. That sounds fun. We propose that Lord Heiress of the Copper Hill should get married to my niece, Princess Rhaenys. That is Visenya's daughter. So technically, would be... Is it his sister? Yeah, it's his sister. Okay. I'll say except because realistically, I probably couldn't stop that anyway. Uh, in addition, I don't know if I should, Jaehaerys has also chosen to get married. He is marrying his sister, uh, Malaris. Though she's only nine, so there's going to be some time before. There's a plot in Illyria. Oh, crap. Um, yeah, definitely want to be aware of that. Um, he, oh, he's one of the Havars. I don't especially care about him, then. I don't care about the Havars. Or oh, Ilvars, sorry. Vagon of Kiyosaki Pass. My nephew. One of the bastards. He's died from mysterious circumstances. And you're in a plot to kill the master of, of Mantaris. Uh, sure. This is odd. And a bit worrying. He has a lot of kids, so Lord Magon is now taken over Kiyosaki Pass. But that is... Part of Cinderblood has died there. Even if it was a bastard line which didn't inherit the, the bloodline that we have. I don't want to give him land, especially not bloody Tolos. Um, I'll give him a favour. He's in a faction? That is worrying. Oh, no, oh, that's not worrying at all, because he's a crown loyalist. That's actually exactly what. This is the faction I'm worried about. I know that this faction's going to exist, because of course it would. And it's being led by... Oh, Borash. So Borash is not actually a loyalist. That's something to keep in mind. So... I've got plenty of known plots. 
I don't especially mind this faction existing. I think this faction just makes sense for lore. Valex is now being ridden. Uh, and it, but it will, you know, right now it doesn't have a lot of power. I'm sure that power is only going to grow. So we need to upscale it. But it's very good that our son is a crown loyalist and he's brought him in to be a crown loyalist as well. This is the best faction you could, obviously, you can have. People who are always going to rise with you to protect you. I think Marine on our side is very helpful. Is Marine at war? He's doing a slave raid on Hesh. Smart move. Let me have a look. Do I have prisoners? What can I do with them? Let's ransom off some prisoners because I don't really need all of them. White Claw is now being ridden by Septon. Oh no, but yeah, why is a Septon able to ride on a dragon? Two Septons now ride on dragons. Septon Conspiracy? Maester Conspiracy confirmed? Ooh, a great council. So this is what you can do if you don't have a strong air. I very much like that feature. Very useful. So we still have our all of our crown pearls, all of that good stuff. A war in Yunkai. And he's now stressed. I'm within my full rights. Okay, so he refused to leave the faction he's in. Ugh. Okay, he was he was just taking down one of his own vessels, it seems. Let's see if we can get him out of the faction. With a polite request. No, okay, but neither of them like me. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. So he's going to take down Hesh, which we're, we're fine with taking slaves off Hesh. How big is... If we look at that, how big is my... I don't know, do I not have any slaves? Because usually here it'd say if I had slaves. I'm like, do I not have slaves? I do not. Okay, we should go on a slave raid then. Who on? Um, can I do one on Jomo? A slave raid? No? Um, oh, because he doesn't technically border me. Okay. But Morrow does, but Morrow's already at war, so that wouldn't be so Maybe Zogo then. Oh, he's in an empire. Which is... Two extra provinces. Okay, that doesn't especially matter. Colonization of Khanjat. Um, no, we'll just go for the slave raid for now. They will surely honor their obligations. Yeah, stop mourning. Okay, she's willing to remarry. Okay, she's not willing to remarry, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. And her dragon is now established the lair. Okay, I'm sure somebody's going to go try and tame that. Uh, we'll just invite the family, because she's just my sister. Okay, both of them are willing to join. In fact, they can go handle that slave raid, in all honesty. Like, they've got the men for it. The question would be the fate of Astapor. Because we are far more expansionist than our father was. Not only do we have ambitious, but we have all these, you know, horrid traits, cruel, deceitful, authoritative, lunatic. It does make a lot of sense. He took a loan? Interesting, okay. Do I have an option to repay it early? No, okay, I'll just wait until it comes in to repay it then. That's fine. But yeah, she committed suicide because I demanded that she marry. Interesting. No man's land. So is, how has he risen in this way? Is he going to be... He's he, Obviously, he's a Zogolari. The Zogolaris hate me for about 150 different reasons. But why... I'd be interested to know why he's risen as a thing called No Man's Land. Hopefully, maybe we'll, I don't need to reconquer that. It should, because it should actually be a vassal under Marine. I'll have to fix that if that's not the case. Oh no, I'm immediately able to declare war on him, so maybe he is independent. Because he's not in the war either. Uh, I'll wait till the war ends and see what happens there. 
a Miranese li- okay he- no so this is what he's from so he's from maybe maybe he's not I I have no idea what's going on let's raise our local forces um let's get Tristan leaning on the side let's also raise these forces here and just use these two to take care of that 15k stack He's no longer my Arkan. What happened? Yeah, he's gonna wipe that Miranese army. Okay, we gotta get over there then. Let's get to Marine. Um, what happened to my Archon? Did he die? Darn. Okay, um, let's get a new Archon. Do you have anyone especially good at stewardship? No. Everyone stuck at stewardship, so we'll just go with you. My generals hate me. Uh, we'll go Malera, so maybe she'll start liking me a bit more. Uh, training troops. He's my nephew. I don't especially care about his traits. Does he have a son yet? Oh no! Of course he doesn't. Sorry, I meant my my son. Does my son have a son yet? Yes, but he died newborn. The Lord of No Man Land died. I can attempt to steal his head from his grave, or I can lose the trait rule. Do I want the trait brawl? It feels like he is a cruel person. I mean, it's a bad trait, but I feel like he is a cruel person. So let's try and steal his head. I'm a bit of a lunatic. Wow. Oh, it's a treasury item. Gives me a little bit of monthly prestige. I'll take it. Hey. Never say no. Um... Am I able to make my son... Probably can't make him my commander, can he? Because he owns his own... Titles now. Uh, yeah. Okay. I might just have to put Resnak on that side then. That bastard I hate. Maybe he'll die in battle. That'll be the hope. Right, let's stop this siege then. Reclaim Marine. Yeah, it's mostly just peasants it seems, so we're just gonna crush crush them, and then we'll take care of these arms and then we'll head up to Zogo. Although it looks like Yunkai is having to go. That's how big a loan I took. God, I must have taken it when I was still Prince. Because it was a Marine... It was a... It seems to be a Marine loan. Well, it's repaid. It'd be funny if I stuck that loan on my son instead. I don't think he'd be able to repay that. Zaragon... I... Am I meant to care? He's, wait, he's in my own dungeons. How is that a setback? What? <laughs> it's like, it's a setback that this person is in our dungeons. I'm not sure what to do yet with Astropor. I think Astropor would be a pretty wealthy area to take. You know, 12k people, decent wealth. And it probably would still call the new geese again. But... Maybe we'll see, we'll, we'll check the state of things after this war. Just see how many men we have, see how we're doing financially. And then we'll make a decision on them. Um, question it closely. I'm going to go for the cruel options with this guy. The most intriguing way at your colony in Draconis. It is made from Imperials of Slab of Stone, with inscriptions and carvings, just at least some kind of vault. But, Hmm. Eighty percent chance I find ancient treasures. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh wow! 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 A second Valyrian steel sword. I think. Well, Chimera is better, right? Yeah, Chimera is better. Actually, they're the exact same. But I will still wield Chimera because it's kind of like the the honourable badge of my father. But what would I call a Valyrian steel sword? Leave your comments about what you would call it, because obviously we can rename this in the future, and I'm going to have to think about what I would call it now. 
Hmm, maybe I should name it after Faxalex. Or name it after Majesty. But I don't... Hmm. I think I'll name it after Faxalex. The, the blade will be called Like the Dragon. And then if you have suggestions about renaming it, please do let me know. And then I might, I'll might i make this like, you know, like a Dark Sister. Maybe make it the, the Brothers title. Although, pff, I'm probably not going to give it to my brother. Because, although it could be a way of pacifying him. If I grant him the Valyrian Steel Sword of Faxalex. It is an Ancestral Sword. I'm going to say, uh, first of all, we're going to accept this peace offer. Aemon won. Got some slaves from it. Wonderful. Go. So, okay, so No Man's Land just is under the liege, but he just roses his own thing now. Yeah, reappoint the old council. Um, let's have a think here for a moment. I think it makes sense to give the blade to Jaehaerys. He is my... He's my... Eldest brother, right? Yeah, he's my eldest brother. My only other brother being Valar. Although we do have... Do we have different mothers? No, we have the same mother. It's He has a different mother, yeah. So he is my true-born brother of the same mother. I think we give him the blade. I think it makes sense to give him the Valerian steel. Right, Valerian store, back selects. It'll, it'll probably be renamed by him all. If you guys have name suggestions, please do comment them, and then I will have a think about what name makes most sense. And then this army can go back to Marine and then disband. And we can determine what to do about Astropor. You wanna... Fine, I'll let you legitimize a bastard. So next in line would be Jaehaerys and then Rhaegal, because obviously his, his son died in childbirth. Oh, he's revoking cities. I guess he's trying to strengthen himself up a bit then. Makes sense. Uh, sure, you can be stubborn. Fun trait to have. My lord, it seems that uh, my brother has finally come out of hiding. So he was in hiding for some reason? I guess just because he's depressed, maybe. Still doesn't have a son. So who would inherit Yunkai? Me. I'm next in line. Makes sense. I would say that after... If he does die and loses Yunkai, I may give it to... Eris... Or I may give it to my other brother, Rhaegal. Or oh, no, my other brother, um, Valar. Or I could give it to Rhaegal. Empower my house even more. Um, let us... Why do I have to pay the dowry? It's his own sister. I'll pay a tiny amount. Um, let's get him on thrift. Advisor. Let's make the Lord of Borash an advisor. Maybe that will make him like me a bit. Yeah, nobody likes me because I have all of the worst traits. It does especially matter because I don't need to pass many laws un unless I want to increase authority. It might be worth to increase authority now just because I have larger vassals and actually have vassals. Or I could increase obligations, get a bit more noble tax or maybe church tax uh i'm just gonna go with a max for these slaves because i want to keep them for now if possible i think now's the time to strike astapor they have <laughs> their ruler has cancer as well so they're a very weak person i'm about to be asked to pay for Rhaegar's training Um, is he my nephew? Yeah, he's Visenya's daughter. So actually, secretly a son of Rhaegar. 
and even named after him. Yes, definitely Rhaegar's son then. Um, we'll give him a decent education then. I wonder how much of an open secret it would be within the, this world that, you know, Eris, Rhaegar, Rhaenys, and Visenya are all actually Aemon's kids. It would be an interesting thought. Dragonus is taking a very long time. I want this colony to be done so I can move on to Howling Bogs. Because already the Lancers is starting to colonize and they are cutting me off on this side. So I'm going to have to focus mostly on... But I may leave Howling Bogs and just focus on the fortifications on this side. Gain as much like as I can, and then you know, go to war with Volantis over the rest. Is that the oh, the remaining Targaryen, not landed still, but he's in. Does he own the High Lord? No, he serves the High Lord of Duskendale, and of he rides Valerian. Okay. I say we go for Astropor. Why not? But I'm... And like the others, I won't immediately, like... <sighs> I'm not going to immediately take the lands off of her. I'm going to do it a bit more naturally with Astropor. Mostly because I don't even know who I'd land on there. Probably one of my sons, again. Like Rhaegal. Or maybe I might, for the fun and the drama of it, give it to Jaehaerys. Okay, yeah, I expect Anugis to aid them. I mean, if Yunkai plays a big part in this war, it might make sense to... My aunt tried and failed. Okay. Uh... Because the kingdom of Yunkai is so small compared to Marine, that it would make sense like administratively to maybe have both Astropor and Yunkai be the same ruler. Should I spend some time with my son at the Great Pyramid? You could say that, you know, I'm spending time there while I'm leading here, because it doesn't look like he's leading an army. No, he's not. He's too much of a, he's zero personal combat ability to compare to my seventy five. Ooh! I try to sit up in bed, but someone is holding me down. It's a burly armsman with the trustworthy face I promoted the guard last week. There's a skinny little fellow with him grinning as he produces a dragon and stabs me. Screaming crash out, I manage to kick the guard on the groin and break free. I punch the other one in the nose and rush from the room, trailing blood. I'm wounded. So someone is trying to kill me. I may have to go into hiding. Do I not have the option? Is it because I'm leading an army? Am I missing it? Maybe it's... Okay, it's because I'm commanding. Ugh. Would I back down though? I mean, it's clear someone's trying to kill me. But who? I don't know if it would be... I, I don't think Jaehaerys has the traits to be a murderer. He's craven, he's trusting. But he is, dece he is deceitful, so maybe. But him killing me would just put Jaehaerys on the throne. It wouldn't get him on the throne. He's still a well ways off the throne. Unless he's just going to keep killing my, my family over and over. I think with this threat, Aemon would put Tristan in command of the army. And we'll put uh, Malaris on because she has a dragon. And I will go into hiding. Let my wife be regent for a bit. Just so things can cool down. My master of whispers hates me. Ugh. I'm gonna let me send him a gift. And I can't I can't sway him. That's annoying. It's part of the problem of having everyone hate you. That by everyone hating you, your courtiers hate you too. Too many held high lordships. Do I? I don't think I held too many high lordships. Um.
Oh god, these factions might be growing in size as well. No, no, it's just a counterpower one. Okay. It actually looks like Marine Zoom has to work it, but it would still, in my mind at least, make sense to grant this to Young Guy, like for administrative purposes. Just have these be one United Kingdom. Because it's about the same size as Geese and Marine, honestly. Young Guy's too small, realistically. Take out one army in Slaver's Road. Quicksilver's Dragon Egg. Volon has been born. Wow. So my sister Malaris now also rides dragon. Called Volon. Looks like we've won a war. She died a natural death. Why do I not believe that? Call me a fool, but I don't believe she died a natural death. Um, justice in the family. All the courts. All the courts shall attend because she was my wife. I will come out of, of um, hiding. Hmm. Did I accidentally raise the army in an area where they all died again? Ugh, I still have enough that I don't especially mind, but this this should count as friendly territory, so I don't know why it would do that if that is the case. Sometimes the game's just a bit weird. Um, let's train to troops again. Where was Hitworth? No, these all still have troops, so that, that didn't happen. Oh, maybe it did, because Illyria doesn't have any troops. I always do that. That's that's just on me being an absolute uh, numpty. You don't have to worry about that. So I could. I'm gonna basically I'm gonna become widowed here. Um, spend one on food. Drown myself in wine. Women in song. This nonsense. I shall move on with my life. Let's see if I can move on with my life. Oh no, it's a ninety percent chance on that one. Forty percent here. Ten percent here. Hmm. Gonna go with this one. I'm a drunkard and I'm depressed, but I'm not a widower. Yeah, and reappoint the old council. And when she... When I'm able to, I will revoke her title. No, I'm not gonna let you marry my court position off. I want at least one person who likes me. Although I'm not even sure she likes me. Okay, he's starting to like me at least. Build spy network. Um. Okay, so yeah, this is one that lets him uncover plots. So let's keep him on that, see if he can uncover this plot against me. God, someone who would remove a head from a body? Who would do such a thing like that? That's completely un I disgusting. <laughs> the petition for court. She claims that Malefra had one of her kinsmen murdered. This is of the Painted Valleys. Um, yeah, have to pay compensation. So it is done. I, why, I just don't trust that she died a natural death. My third wife as well. Hmm. Okay, no, and I, did I get widowed? Or is there another trait preventing marriage? Yeah, I did get widowed. Okay. That effort I took to avoid it did not matter. He he did what? Is my son against me now? 
Oh, he is. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. I can't believe a, a, a favour would make him leave the crowned loyalists to join Jaehaerys' claim. Ugh. Oh, dear. 80... What is that? 82% of my power. Maybe me lowering those troops may have actually caused some problems then. Uh, let's get these levies back up, please. And quick. It's it's seeming more and more like... No, you're not going to be my regent. More and more like he's gone from being weak to being powerful. If he can get Astropor on his side, I think he'll be ready to make a claim against me. But the thing is, it maybe doesn't matter because he doesn't have an heir. His, his wife still isn't even of age, so... Prosperity of Tolos increases, wonderful. But he is our biggest threat. I Maybe I need to see if I can get Astro on my side, but they're going to hate me because I took them over. So most likely, what I'm going to have to do is take over... Wait for the truce to end. Try and wait out his war and then revoke her title and give it to a loyalist. That's probably my smartest move. Because it's unlikely I'm going to be able to sway anyone else to my side. God, lunatic to press Drenkard. Okay, I need to appoint a regent just so people stop asking to be my regent. My son is my regent. We are expanding, we're growing. Obviously, G New Gis is going to be the next target. I think everybody knows that. My half-brother wants a title. I literally have no idea what title I could even give you other than this title. But I want to give this to a loyalist and I don't fully trust you. Um, oh, very well. But it doesn't give him a specific one. Yeah, I don't want to be seen as a tyrant. If I just click over very well, I don't know what that does. Maybe it gives him, like, a minor title? Hmm. I need Draconis to be done. I'm going to give Draconis to Tristan. Who now has three children. Uh, Zarios, Jibero, and Arelos. And as a Valyrian, he also has a, a second wife. He also hates Restax, which is he's he just like me for real. My own court has finished his education in the military training. Hey, he's not that good. I would have thought he'd get better because I'm, you know, a brilliant commander. It's, ironically, so is um Jaharis, but like the opposite sides of the coin, really. I love the name Blood of the, Blood of the Chimera. And obviously the Chimera being the blade of North Illyria. That's such a cool event. I, I, having a second blade is even cooler, though. But <laughs> Brave trait. Very good. There's not been an event in a while in Draconis, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Is there any chance I could increase my domain size? Yeah, I get none from my stewardship. <laughs> Makes sense. So if probably if I was him, I'd be way better off right now. Because I could probably have a sixth title. Do I need a loan to actually afford any of these? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, he's he's a little bitch. Everyone at court whispers about me. I'm sure of it. I hear them. I hear them in the hall. I hear them in the corridors and in the night. They say I'm unfit, erratic, tyrant even. But I'll show them justice and show my innocence. So I have to choose someone to fight against me. Throw me in the dungeon, that'll show them. I hold a trial for myself before the court. I guess I have a trial by combat against myself. I'm going to poison Chimera. And immediately kill him. <laughs> I mean, his personal combat wasn't even that good. So I put myself in prison and demanded a trial by combat against myself. 
correct. But I guess in the eyes of God, you know, if you win a trial by combat before the gods, you're a good man. So clearly, I must be a good man. Can't doubt that. Lunatic traits really are the best. Threaten the vessel. Mm. I'm going to use some leverage on my son, see if I can get him out of that faction. Okay, it's upset him a bit, but has he left the faction? Yes, okay. So it's a, it's a weak faction again. Whew. He's not a crown loyalist, though. But he should... Yeah, he still loves me. Very good. The only person in this whole realm who does, honestly. Only my children. And even then, <laughs> not really. It's only him. The other kids aren't that big a fan. Flamboyant schemer. Mm, I'm going to threaten her. Because there's no way asking her is going to work. Okay, we'll keep... Should keep her out of factions as well. I don't mind her being on a council power one. I just don't... I need to keep her out of... This faction for Jaehaerys. Oh, Tristan is now a crown loyalist. That's good. He's the leader of the crown loyalist, technically. Oh no, and I've got fatigue. Gods! Things are going awful for, um, Aemond. All these traits, and now he has gout. We, the, the dragon's already returned, but she drank wildfire to prove she was a dragon. Dragon Quicksilver is a ravenous beast. She regularly roams the lands of Illyria, gorging on livestock and peasants. Hundreds of them have, uh, of the, hundreds of them have seen audience with you in the past to protest this. Uh, I could pay gold for piety. I'll take the revolt risk chance. I mean, we're not doing anything against that dragon. They're dragons are dragons. I don't care if the... Honestly, I'm not doing anything for that vassal. Fuck him. That beautiful big name Cinder. It makes you happy to see. Uh, no, trust is a good trait. You can adjust. You would... No. Yeah, okay, I've, I've gained gout. Hopefully it's a normal illness at most. Today my half brother principal has asked me for him. I'll just you can keep asking all you want, you're not gonna get one. She's offered me a treatment for my illness. She explains there are several different types of treatment she can offer. I trust your knowledge. I feel different. Oh So <laughs> Miss I've been mystically altered by her, which has made me a poet and made me slightly better at everything. Which I guess is to try and counteract the gout, reducing everything. Okay, she's of age, yeah, you can get that marriage done now. He's gonna be hoping and clamoring for an heir because he's also not doing that good on health. He's gonna be needing one very badly. Let's wait on the month tick and then during its long period, we went to Rose of Draconis. Um, yeah. We'll pay some money to repay Draconis. Oh, my goodness. I was thinking, I wonder if something's going to happen on the month tick before I continue. And something indeed has happened. Eamon Cinder is dead. After his father ruled... From the age of 20 to the age of almost 70, Aemons has not even had anywhere near that length of time. And now we're Emperor Jahiris. This is interesting. This is going to give even more of a rise to the claims of Yunkai. Faxalix has flown away into the dragon pit for someone to claim. Uh, the wealth has been shared between me and Regal. 
and we will have a massive funeral for him. I can't afford all balls on ladies, that's a bit too expensive. In fact, I can't afford any of this. I'm gonna have to take a loan, or maybe sell some slaves first. Okay. I'm gonna sell some slaves to pay for this funeral. Let's drink an unrest through the realm. Challenges to the Cinder rule are emerging, with many peasants and other bandits and outlaws causing trouble. That sounds like the perfect point to end this at. I feel like it's almost perfect after having such a long and stable rule under Prince Rhaegar that Aemon's rule was a rule of sickness, of strife, and of a quick and early death. Now we're in an interesting situation where realistically Rhaegar should now be given the blade of Jaehaerys. It was meant to be the brother's blade. And what shall happen to Marine? Shall I give Marine to my brother or wait until I can give it to my son? We're in a very interesting position here now. Very interesting indeed. The fate of Astropol will have to be determined too. And with this death, we'll have to see if there's any claimants that may come for the Cinder Throne. I love cliffhangers. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Next session is going to be a big one. I have a feeling next episode is going to have a big award. This this has been a pretty fun session as well. But who shall emerge from the fires? Who shall rule? Or perhaps there shall be no fires. Perhaps Jaehaerys shall go uncontested. And if he does, will his rule be a long one? After all, he's not exactly the smartest of kings. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Thank you to all of my Patreons who help me keep the series running. If you want to join my Patreon and see videos a week early, check the description or click the link on screen now. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then.